I think Jack Bogle has done more for American investors than any other uh, person connected with Wall Street or the investment process because he, with a number of other people, he came up with the idea of the index fund. He wasn't the sole uh, thinker behind it, but he was the guy that implemented it and, and, and crusaded for it. But now there's trillions of dollars in low-cost index funds. Those people are going to have better lives, they're going to have better retirements, their kids are going to inherit more money because uh, of Jack Bogle and his efforts. Warren Buffett admires the simplicity and effectiveness of Vanguard funds, including their ETFs, founded by Jack Bogle. But he's also flagged a common mistake many investors fall into when buying and holding the funds. Ever heard of too much of a good thing? Well, that's exactly what we're discussing today. In this video, we're learning about the mistake Buffett warns us about and how to avoid it. I don't diversify personally. I mean, and, and uh... we're also addressing some burning questions. Why are ETFs, especially vanguards, so appealing to investors? What's the magic formula for making money with ETFs? And just how much can you realistically expect to earn? And finally, how do you attain the perfect balance in your ETF investments to ensure long-term success? We break down Buffett's principles, suggest some Vanguard ETFs he advocates, and share examples from history and current trends to guide your investment strategy. Whether you're a seasoned investor or just starting out, you'll want to avoid this popular mistake to keep your portfolio growing strong. Let's get started. First up, let's look into why ETFs, especially those from Vanguard, have caught investors' eyes globally. ETFs, or exchange-traded funds, are like baskets of stocks or bonds that you can buy and sell on the stock market, just like individual stocks. They're popular because they offer a simple way to invest in many companies at once, spreading out your risk. Plus, they're known for having lower fees than traditional mutual funds, making them a cost-effective choice. But as Warren Buffett often points out, it's not just about picking any ETF. It's about choosing the right ones. Vanguard's ETFs are particularly appealing because they're designed to track the performance of a specific index, like the S&P 500, giving you a slice of the market's action with just one investment. This approach aligns with Buffett's philosophy of betting on the market's overall growth over time rather than trying to pick individual winners. ETFs are also super flexible. You can buy or sell them anytime during the trading day, just like stocks, which gives you more control over your investment price. And here's a kicker. The dividends from the companies within these ETFs, they get reinvested right away, boosting your potential returns through the magic of compounding. But, and it's a big but, while ETFs offer a lot of advantages, they're not all created equal. Some might focus on sectors or regions that don't align with Buffett's criteria for solid long-term investment. That's why he emphasizes the importance of choosing wisely, focusing on ETFs that offer broad market exposure and are backed by a philosophy of long-term growth. In simple terms, ETFs are like a multi-tool for investors, versatile, efficient, and handy for building a diversified portfolio. But as Buffett would remind us, the key to success is using this tool wisely, focusing on quality and long-term growth potential. When it comes to investing, Warren Buffett, also known as the Oracle of Omaha, likes to keep things simple and effective. He's a big fan of index funds, famously saying a low-cost index fund is the most sensible equity investment for the great majority of investors. This piece of advice is pure gold, especially in today's world where we're bombarded with endless ETF options. Now, Buffett warns us not to get too carried away. It's easy to fall into the trap of thinking more is better, chasing after every new ETF trend that pops up. But Buffett believes that this kind of strategy might do more harm than good. Why is that? Well, every time you switch up your investments, you're potentially racking up costs and taxes, which can eat into your returns. Plus, getting distracted by the latest hot investment can lead you away from solid growth-oriented companies. Buffett's approach is all about the long game. So what we really want to do is buy businesses that we would be happy to own forever. He famously said, our favorite holding period is forever. 
it's a reminder that picking your investments wisely and sticking with them can really pay off. This isn't just about avoiding the hassle and costs of frequent trading. It's about giving your investments the chance to grow and compound over time. And let's not forget, Buffett has always been skeptical of complicated investment strategies that promise sky-high returns. He often points out that these strategies not only fail to beat the market over time, but also add unnecessary complexity and risk to your portfolio. His advice? Keep it simple with a diversified portfolio of low-cost index funds or ETFs that track the broader market. Following this path, according to Buffett, is likely the best bet for most investors, allowing them to enjoy the market's growth without getting caught up in the noise. Alright, now let's get into the heart of today's chat, the big no-no in investing that Warren Buffett keeps warning us about. You've probably heard the term diversification thrown around a lot. Diversification is a risk management strategy that mixes a variety of investments within a portfolio. The rationale behind this technique lies in the saying, don't put all of your eggs into one basket. By spreading investments across various financial instruments, industries, and other categories, it aims to reduce the impact of a single adverse event on the overall performance of the portfolio. But here's where it gets interesting. Buffett tells us that you can actually have too much of a good thing. Yeah, you heard that right. Over-diversifying, especially with ETFs, might not be the golden ticket we thought it was. Because all they're going to do is own a part of America. And they made a decision that owning a part of America is worthwhile. I don't quarrel with that at all. That is the way they should approach it, unless they want to bring an intensity to the game to make a decision and start evaluating businesses. But once you're in the business of evaluating... Buffett's been pretty clear on this, saying, Diversification is a protection against ignorance. It makes very little sense for those who know what they're doing. Businesses, and, and you decide that you're going to bring the effort and intensity and, uh, uh, and time involved to get that job done, then I think that diversification is a terrible mistake. Now, he's not saying we should put all of our eggs into one basket. Instead, he's nudging us to find that sweet spot. Enough variety to spread risk, but not so much that we dilute our potential gains or lose track of what we're investing in. Now, how do we strike the right balance with our ETF investments, keeping true to Buffett's wisdom? First off, focus on quality over quantity. It's better to invest in a few well-chosen ETFs that cover broad market indexes or sectors you believe in, rather than scatter your money across too many options. Buffett himself is a big advocate for ETFs that track major indexes, like the S&P 500. Vanguard's S&P 500 ETF, or VOO, is a prime example. It's simple, covers the broad market, and it's in line with Buffett's advice that most investors should consistently buy an S&P 500 low-cost index fund. But here's another Buffett gem for you. It's far better to buy a wonderful company at a fair price than a fair company at a wonderful price. We never buy something with a price target in mind. I mean, we never buy something at 30 saying if it goes to 40, we'll sell it or 50 or 60 or 100. We just don't do it that way any more than when we buy a private business like Seize Candy for 25 million. We don't say to ourselves, if, it ever, if we ever got an offer of 50 million for this business, we'd sell it. That, that's just not the way to look at a business. The way to look at a business is, is this going to keep producing more and more and more money over time? And if the answer to that is yes. Pick a few strong contenders that give you broad market exposure, like Vanguard's Total Stock Market ETF or the Vanguard Value ETF, and stick with them for the long haul. Remember, investing is a marathon, not a sprint. By keeping it simple and focusing on quality, you're setting yourself up for long-term success, just like Buffett suggests. Let's sprinkle in some historical context and trends to beef up our understanding of Buffett's advice on ETF investing. Take the dot-com bubble of the late 1990s and early 2000s as a classic example. It was a time when investors were wildly over-diversifying into tech stocks and tech-focused ETFs, chasing after the latest internet companies with little regard for their underlying value or profitability. Buffett steered clear of this frenzy, sticking to his principles of investing in companies with solid fundamentals. When the bubble burst, those who had spread their investments too thinly across these trendy tech ETFs suffered significant losses, while Buffett's disciplined approach shielded his portfolio from the worst of the downturn. 
Another trend worth noting is the recent surge in thematic ETFs, which focus on specific niches like electric vehicles, renewable energy, or blockchain technology. While these can offer exposure to emerging industries with high growth potential, they also exemplify the kind of over-diversification Buffett warns against. Investing in too many of these niche ETFs can lead to a scattered portfolio that's more vulnerable to market volatility and less likely to achieve consistent long-term growth. Buffett's own investment in the S&P 500 through Vanguard's S&P 500 ETF, or VOO, serves as proof of his belief in the power of simplicity and the long-term growth potential of the broad market. This ETF gives you access to the best companies in a wide range of industries. It follows Buffett's advice to bet on the future of the American economy instead of trying to pick individual winners. Now to the most awaited questions answer. Let's break down these numbers and see just how much you can potentially make by investing in ETFs. Imagine that you've got a slice of the market in your portfolio through an ETF that tracks a major index, like the S&P 500. Historically, the stock market has returned about 7 to 10% per year on average, after adjusting for inflation. But how does that translate to actual earnings through ETFs? Say you start with an initial investment of $1,000 in a Vanguard ETF and plan to add $100 every month. Assuming an average annual return of 8%, how much would you have after 20 years? Through the power of compounding, your investment would grow to about $59,295. That's your original $25,000 contribution, which is $1,000 initially, plus $100 a month for 20 years, growing by over $34,000 just from returns. Now let's talk dividends. Many ETFs pay dividends, which you can choose to reinvest, further fueling the growth of your investment through compounding. This is like getting a bonus that keeps on giving, as those reinvested dividends buy more shares of the ETF, which in turn may generate more dividends. So, while no investment comes without risk, and past performance is not indicative of future results, the math behind ETFs shows that with a disciplined approach, patience, and time, you can potentially build a substantial nest egg. Remember, the key is to start early, keep contributing regularly, and reinvest those dividends. This strategy aligns with Buffett's philosophy of long-term investing and his belief in the power of compounding. By focusing on low-cost ETFs that offer broad market exposure, you're setting yourself up for a chance at solid returns over the long haul. From understanding the appeal of ETFs to decoding the math that shows their potential, and finally, dealing with the common mistakes to avoid, we've covered a lot of ground. But this conversation doesn't end here. We want to hear from you. First, how do you plan to apply Buffett's advice on finding the right balance in your ETF investments? And second, have you ever fallen into the trap of over-diversification, and how did it impact your investment journey? Drop your answers, thoughts, and any questions you have into the comments below. Your insights not only enrich our community, but also help us all grow as investors. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more investment wisdom and strategies. Until next time, happy investing!